How do you get people to see things they otherwise wouldn't see, to think about problems in ways they otherwise wouldn't think about? We need to listen to communities. We need to include them in the dialogue and the discussions. We need to bring the best that science has. We need to bring the best the global community has. It's not good enough to be clever. It's not good enough to be creative. It's not good enough to come up with a good story. Effectiveness is really the key, and that's what behavioral science will improve. Can we combine statistics, data, and art and aesthetics all together to understand these questions that have to do with poverty, with behavior, with communities, resilience, with inclusion? I'm working on a project to reorient the literature on crisis management and embed ideas about resilience. There's been a lot of discussion about predictable surprises. I want to understand what happens in the period before chaos arrives. A form of art can be instrumental in either changing norms or providing information that people in the community might need. My region Southeast Asia is one of the most disaster-prone regions in the world. So what I'm trying to do is to showcase how differently we might respond to disasters if the culture and the context is different. I take a look at the work of Gado and how he has been able to explain things in a very visual way. It got me thinking about, okay, maybe we should consider using cartoons, for example, when we talk about disaster preparedness. I'm working on Kenyan constitution in graphic form. We haven't seen an attempt to educate the masses with the new document. I mean, you are not only producing a book, but you are also building a citizenry that is aware of the law. My project is called the RAP Research Lab. It's a big data project that allows us to understand the geography of the language in hip hop and how that relates to other data sets. A flat line is a flat line is a flat line, so we have to make this more dramatic. How to make it more visually appealing without messing with the truth of the data. So there's this incredibly organic thing that can only happen in this kind of magical environment where people who are interested in the same broad area but come at it from different vantage points. But this theme that we're talking about is all about human behavior. And what I really wanted to look at was how big of the divide is there in human behavior. I think it raises very legitimate ethical questions. You can really compromise your standing in a community, your reputation, your impartiality, if you're seen as being part of a legal process and not just a therapeutic care provider or a healthcare worker. So I'm starting to think about institutional resilience on many levels itself. That's not how I plan to think about this work when I arrived here <laughs> three weeks ago, but, but it is now. And I'm actually very grateful for having been sort of pushed to think of it that way. You know, I'm obsessed around saving newborn lives in communities. I just realized that there is so much amazing ways that we can actually make this world a much better place. And science just happens to be one of them. It's been a journey inward in terms of reflecting on my own work and, and having really the respite from your day-to-day -day responsibilities to get completely engaged. But it's also been this journey with others and thinking about their work and how it informs my work and something sparks that I don't think you can quite script. My world just expanded.